Good evening and welcome to this service of lessons and carols. Thank you for being here, um, especially as there are lots of different competing opportunities, several even tonight here in Toowoomba. Thank you for coming to worship with us and to offer this service in prayer and praise to God and in preparation of our hearts for the celebration of Christmas. Dear people of God, in the season of Advent we are invited to journey, to go again to faraway places and distant times, to travel in the company of those who longed for a world less violent, more loving, more compassionate. We are invited to journey to Bethlehem to find the Prince of Peace and invited to journey within to find again that hint of peace which comes from openness to God. We come to remember firstly the child and his parents and those who witnessed his birth. We are invited to remember the poor, the outcast and the oppressed, the refugee and those shunned by society. We are invited to notice and to have our eyes opened again with wonder, even the open-hearted wonder of a child. Come with us on this journey. Be companions to one another with eyes and hearts and minds open. Amen. We prepare to sing our, first, uh, our next carol, our next carol, O Come All Ye Faithful, which will be followed by the first lesson to be read by our Mayor. And I'm really grateful to you, Paul, for coming and being with us. And um, Paul then has uh, other commitments tonight, but agreed to come and to be here with us to share in this first reading and the beginning of our carols. So thank you, and it is Wonderful as always to have you among us. We join in singing, O come all ye faithful. it for the first reading.
The reading from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 9, beginning at verse 2. The people who walked in darkness, darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with the justice and the righteousness. From this time onward and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Hear the word of the Lord. In poems written, in stories told, in carols which have been created across the ages, one of the things that happens is that we all seek to find our own place within this story. I have to share with you a poem by Mary Oliver which is about seeking to find that connection but also being surprised and having our hearts and our eyes open. A Christmas poem, a country legend by Mary Oliver. Says a country legend told every year, Go to the barn on Christmas Eve and see what the creatures do as that long night tips over. Down on their knees they will go, the fire of an old memory whistling through their minds. I went, wrapped to my eyes against the cold. I creeped back the barn door and peered in. From town the church bells spilled their midnight music and the beasts listened. Yet they'd lay in their stalls like stone. Oh, the heretics! Not to remember Bethlehem or the star as bright as the sun or the child born on a bed of straw to know only of the dissolving now. Still, they drowsed on. Citizens of the pure, the physical world, they loomed in the dark, powerful of body, peaceful of mind, innocent of history. Brothers, I whispered, it's Christmas, and you are no heretics, but a miracle immaculate still as when you were thundered forth on the morning of creation. As for Bethlehem, that blazing star still sailed the dark, but only looked for me, caught in its light, listening again to its story. I curled against some sleepy beast who nuzzled my her hair as though I were a child, and warmed me the best it could all night. Our second reading from Isaiah chapter 40. The second lesson is from the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 40, verses 1 to 5. Comfort, O comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand a double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, 
and every mountain and hill shall be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Hear the word of the Lord. We gather inside church buildings to celebrate Christmas much of the time and yet when we read the stories and sing the carols much of the action actually happens outside as it does for this carol which we stand now to join in singing together Hark the Herald Angels Sing. It's interesting how conservative many of us can become when it comes to Christmas carols. We are used to particular tunes and that's the tune to which it always must be sung. And yet for very few of the carols were the tunes and the words originally intricately connected. Some that is the case but for many, they have been set to different tunes in different places. Sometimes it can be good to hear them from a slightly different perspective with a tune from a different place. We're now going to sing for you Away in a Manger, but with a French tune from Normandy, 
set by Reginald Jach. Please listen and enjoy. A reading from the prophet Isaiah chapter 60, beginning at verse 1. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephah, all those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We enjoy carols which have their origin from many different parts of the world. We're now going to sing for you a, an Austrian carol called Still, 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 a written originally Stille, Stille, Stille. If for those who may have been here last night for a, a concert of the Brisbane Chamber Choir, and they also sang a, a different translation and different version of this. But... Um, wonderful concert if you missed it but there's so much happening at the moment please enjoy as we sing for you still still still
A reading from the prophet Micah, chapter 5, beginning at verse 2. But you, O Bethlehem Ephrathah, who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore, he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has brought forth. Then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel. And he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall live secure, for now he shall be great to the end of the earth. Hear the word of the Lord. We all do different things with our time off. Phillips Brooks was an uh, Anglican Episcopalian priest in Boston and after many years of service was given some extended leave. And this was in the 19th century. He took some time to be able to make what was then a very long journey to the Holy Land and to be able to be there. And I'm sure that his, um, his sermons and his engagement with people and his sharing of the story in the scriptures was much richer for having spent some time in those many places. One of the things that he did with that though was after having spent some time in Bethlehem itself, he went home and he wrote our next carol which we will sing together as a reflection on the desire for peace. Even then in the 19th century, peace in that place was somewhat elusive and even more so these days. So as we sing, let this be a prayer also that we offer for peace in, that, in the whole of the world and particularly in the Holy Land. We stand to join in singing together, O Little Town of Bethlehem.
Please be seated. As Phillips Brooks found when he travelled around the Holy Land, the stories of the Old Testament and New Testament as we have them blend together because it is one story, as God tells us. So now we move in our readings that we have this evening from those prophets who in their words and in their message prepared the way for the birth of Jesus to hear that story itself told from the Gospels. The fifth lesson is a reading from the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 1, beginning at the 26th verse. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favoured one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favour with God, and now you will receive, conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy and he will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son and this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Hear the word of the Lord. Many of the carols that we sing were written both words and music in the last 200 years. They are relatively modern and in fact some of the carols that we sing were originally tunes from many other places well outside of the church which were then taken and adopted and turned into the Christmas carols that we sing. We're now singing and we're going to stand and join together in the carol in English of the Father's Love Begotten. But if you've noticed at the end of the carol where it is printed that the words actually come from an old Latin text from the end of the 4th and beginning of the 5th century. One of the significant things about that as well is that um, the author Aurelius Clemens Prudentius died just after the conversion of Constantine. So this was written at a time when the church was still very much on the outer, under persecution, no, not yet in a place where we could gather quite easily in public and often not even in private to be able to celebrate Christ's birth and yet the faith that was held and had been held at that stage for centuries and has been passed down to us across millennia was being proclaimed in these words of faith. Let's stand and join together in singing of the Father's love begotten.
Please be seated. We now hear from Luke chapter 2, and uh, as we do, just before I'm um, corrected by the other clergy who are here, of course I was a, a century out, but um, the, uh, those words came from still the very beginning of, um, of Christendom, but it was still at a time when the, uh, the church was still on the outer and only gradually becoming a safe place. The reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. In those days a decree went out from the Emperor, Augustus, that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own town to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descendant from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. Hear the word of the Lord. Bells are often part of celebrations of Christmas and often they are woven into various carols and songs that are prepared, of course, in the modern version, Jingle Bells. But uh, we have now, the uh, choir is going to sing Ding Dong Ding, which has a, uh, the title, Up, Chris Up Good Christian Folk and Listen. Listen to the um, first line, which will be played as an introduction. Just hear the bells ringing, and then the choir will join in with singing Ding Dong Ding. The tune there came from the 16th century and of course the Latin woven in there from, out of, from Mary and Ex Maria Virgine and Christus Natus Hodie, Christ is born today. From the 16th century to the 20th, 
John Wheeler and William James took up the challenge to write some Australian Christmas carols, to take up the challenge to place the continuing celebration of this story in our context, in the Southern Hemisphere, in a place where we don't have snow falling, not usually at Christmas time, not for much of Australia. And so some of the images and the themes which are part of Northern Hemisphere Christmas carols just don't quite gel. But we have this collection of Australian Christmas carols, some of which have now become quite popular over the last 30 to 40 years since they were first written. We're now going to sing for you the Carol of the Birds, picking up that beautiful dance of the brolgas out there in the, uh, in the outback, that sense that the whole of creation is celebrating. Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, beginning at verse 8. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the, in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angels a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angel had left them and had gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. Hear the word of the Lord. People across the world tell the Christmas story in slightly different ways. And that has always been the case because we pick up different nuances, different ways that we emphasize the things that are important and that really stand out and that we hold on to. We will hold on to different parts of the Christmas story. 
And yet often what we will also do is tell a composite story, which is the mixture of a whole range of different experiences. So when we sing these carols, we pick up the experiences across thousands of years, around the whole of the globe, across different times and place. Our next carol, which we are going to stand and sing together, the first Noel, is one of those carols which tells the whole of the story, but recognise that it p takes pieces of that story from different gospel accounts with different emphases from Luke and from Matthew and melds them into, into one story. But we also need to remember as we think that these are some different perspectives on truth. We stand to join in together the first Noel.
A reading from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 1, beginning at verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man, and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Hear the word of the Lord. Not only are we sometimes um, wedded in our minds to particular tunes for Christmas carols, but also sometimes particular words. One of the things that we have realised over the last um, recent decades in particular is the way in which um, often the experience and the presence of women within the church has been excluded by the, the language that we use and so there has been a rediscovery of that more embracing and welcoming and inclusive sense I know that it does jar still with some people but we need to remember that this is an invitation to recognise and to embrace that everyone is welcome. Not only the um, divisions or differences that are there in gender, but also in many other ways in which sometimes humanity is divided or expresses difference. But that we are all welcome here. So we stand to join in singing together, God rest you merry people all. Thank you. 
Please be seated for the final reading, which of course is not the end of the story, but the last piece of the story which we will sing tonight, we will hear tonight. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 2, beginning at the first verse. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him and calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The first piece that the choir sang at the back of the church, The Truth from Above, in the last verse that we had there, the words were if essentially saying, if you want to take this seriously, listen to the words that Jesus is speaking. Listen to the call that is there. And so that was an invitation to enter into the words both from the scriptures as also in the hymns and the carols that we have sung tonight. The choir is now going to sing a modern hymn, Mary's Child. And this invites us to recognize that the story did not end even with the wise men, but continues and continues on towards Easter and beyond. Listen to the words which invite us to recognize the connections across the different parts of Jesus' story and our own lives woven in there also. Thank you. 
Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and to put on the armour of light, now in the time of this mortal life in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you and scatter the darkness from before your path and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you for being here as part of these carols tonight. In the order of service, it also has printed the times for our Christmas services. Please share those with family and friends and uh, come to share with us either in person or um, for several of those services. They will also be online. We stand to join in our final carol that we sing together and then stay because there is an organ voluntary to finish. Um, we stand to join in the north wind. <laughs>